All right, we're going to go through now statement charges in QuickBooks. So many ways to collect money. <laughs> All right, so if we come up here to customers, we can enter statement charges. Notice when you enter the statement charges, first thing you have to do is select your customer that you're entering statement charges for. All right, so if I were to choose, uh, let's say, lighting, Thompson's Lighting Stores as an example. Basically, the idea behind statement charges is that you want to set up a an accrual right for the charges that you're going to bill the customer throughout the month, but you're actually not going to create an invoice for them. You're just going to create a statement at the end of the month. So one's a good idea to use something like this. I've had customers use this when they own a retail location, as an example, but then they allow um, some of their contractor clients. So let's say it's a uh, um, pipe and and a fixture shop. So they'll allow their contractor clients to come in and purchase items, right, as they go. And instead of just creating a sales receipt every time or something like that, or creating an invoice every time, they'll enter a statement charge every time. So it shows that this customer took this item, this customer took this item, and then at the end of the week or the month, then they'll create a statement send it out to the customer and the customer pays based on the statement, not based on an invoice. Okay. All right. We also have other customers, just as a kind of side note, who want to create the invoice every period or the, you know, the sales receipt every period, every time the customer comes in. And then they want to combine it at the end of the month. So they want to take, you know, I created invoice one, invoice 10, invoice 13, and then at the end of the month, I want to say, okay, get rid of 10 and 13 and make it all just invoice one, but move the details from 10 and 13 on to invoice one. That's something we've done for customers as well before. But back to statement charges. All right, so I come in here, I have my date. Um, I put on here my item. Okay, now notice that it does uh, have the ability to pick up things like quantity discounts, okay? So it picks up the amount, it picks up the description. Since it is an inventory part, I have to choose my site because this is a transaction, right, where I'm selling them a product. And then I have the opportunity to choose a class as well. So I record that transaction. Now when I go look at uh, Thompson's Lighting Stores as a customer in here, I am gonna see that statement charge, but it's actually not a transaction, right? It doesn't have a number associated with it or anything. It actually just takes us straight to this charge in the ledger. Okay, so it, it does affect our inventory. It does have an effect when it comes to our accounts receivable, right? Now this customer owes us $462.60 more, but there is not a physical transaction that we can go in and like print out except at the end of the month when we go print out our statements. So let me go ahead and add one more thing on here. So I'm gonna say quantity of 15 at $11 an hour and record that as well. <clears throat> so now it's the end of the month and I go in and I wanna create my statements. So now I have my statement charges on there. I'm gonna select it just for Thompson Lighting Stores and I'm gonna say the period is to the end of the month. So if I preview this, right? Now when I come in here and look at it, it's showing me, okay, balance forward was zero. Then I had on, uh, you know, 12.15, I had the $462 charge for the brushed nickel. Then I had a custom sale on 12.15 again for $165. And then I had an invoice that's, path, you know, that needs to be paid as well. So again, we're not creating a transaction. It's like each individual thing we're billing them for. When it would be ineffective, right, to be doing something like that is if they come in and they buy 20 products at once, probably want to put that on a transaction, right? Because, you know, bloop, 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 you can scan it into an invoice or a sales receipt uh, if you're using enterprise, or it's just a lot easier to add things to a transaction rather than having to go through right, each line, as an example, um, you know, having to enter each line through here. So something to think about, I don't have a lot of clients that use statement charges anymore. It used to be uh, more used, you know, back in, 
back before we had easier ways to get things onto transactions, before we had find and select and stuff like that. But it's good to know it's there. So those are statement charges.